While it's possible to calculate the ratio for every single line item on the income statement, there are three that we're going to focus on in this module, the three most important profitability ratios. The first one is gross profit margin. Gross profit margin can be calculated by taking the gross profit and dividing it by the sales. To get gross profit, we take the revenue and subtract cost of goods sold or cost of sales. This ratio tells us for every $1 of revenue that was generated, how much is left over after paying the cost of sales or the cost of goods sold. The higher this number is, the better. The second key profitability ratio that we're going to analyze is directly related to the earnings before interest and taxes of the business. It's known as the operating profit margin. In order to calculate operating profit margin, we take the earnings before interest and taxes, also referred to as EBIT or operating profit, and divide it by sales revenue to return a percentage. The higher this percentage is, the more profitable the business is. As you'll recall from earlier in the course, the operating profit is what's left to pay interest to lenders, taxes to governments, and dividends or other forms of return of capital to shareholders. The last of the three profitability ratios relates to the last item on the income statement, the net income or net earnings. By taking the net income and dividing it by sales revenue, we're able to derive the net profit margin. The ratio tells us how much income or how much net earnings are generated for every $1 of revenue. As with all the other ratios, the higher this percentage is, the more profitable the business is. If ROE holds the key to the story, what does it unlock? If we open up ROE, we see that it is made up of three primary ratios. ROE can be set equal to the net profit margin of the business, multiplied by its total asset turnover ratio, multiplied by its degree of financial leverage. If you look at the formulas for the three ratios and consider how to multiply fractions, you will see that sales and total assets cancel each other out. This leaves us with our original formula of net income divided by equity, or ROE. Profitability is probably the most obvious lever that anyone would look to. By improving profitability, a company will improve its rate of return for shareholders. Efficiency is another important lever. How well are assets being used to generate sales? If a company has low margins, it may focus on being more efficient with its assets to generate more sales and in turn improve return on equity. Finally. The financial leverage of an organization, while not an operational item, can be a strategic choice by a company to help improve the return on equity. Increasing financial leverage has the effect of reducing the amount of equity relative to the amount of total assets to the firm. Having a lower equity base makes it easier to have a higher return on equity.